Uh, this is my third time being here in uh, uh, World Office Mater. I did 2018, 2019, and then, you know, the years of COVID, you know, kind of stopped everything, but we're back. So this is my first year doing World Office Mater, and it happens to be 80 degrees desert. Um, it feels great to be out here. Um, I'm a little nervous about the terrain because I'm so used to uh, upstate New York where it's wet and cold, um, rocky, some, it's really soft terrain. Um, so I'm a little hesitant with the whole running on sand, but I'm looking forward to a change. World's Toughest is one of the most unique events on the planet. Besides the fact that it's 24 hours long, it's the first ultra distance obstacle course race, the community is really what makes the event. So as you go through the course, some of the obstacles are kind of designed so you really have a lot of trouble doing them by yourself. Uh, so it forces people to work together and reach out and talk to people. And then as the night progresses, people just get exhausted, they get more tired, and what's great is you make new friends on the course and uh, yeah, that's what really makes the event. It's really you against the course and there is a competitive event going on, but a lot of people, it's, it's kind of them versus the course and them shooting for those mileage goals. I feel like a lot of people underestimate this race. A lot of people come from Spartan where the obstacles are just kind of hard, but they're doable and quick. Tough mutters are a lot more time consuming and they just suck a lot. So doing it for 24 hours, people tend to underestimate that. So people kind of drop around the 16 to 18 hour mark. So I'm hoping that'll work in my favor. The biggest challenge here is the, the, the sand, uh, running in sand, uh, the wind. Uh, it's not going to be as cold as it was the last two times. I don't know if you were able to, to hear the briefing but all the obstacles are hotter, longer, and heavier than the last two, uh, you know, 18 and 19 uh, years. So I think it's going to be more challenging. Honestly, the obstacles don't frighten me here because where we train, the obstacles are very intense. Um, they're kind of like savage race obstacles. But I am worried about the balancing obstacles. We don't do a lot of that. So... Yeah, I would say obstacles are fine, running is great, but it's going to be the balancing that holds me up and doing the penalties if I have to do the penalties. I'm pretty worried about the sand taking a toll on my legs and the elevation just since I'm from Oklahoma, but other than that, I'm glad I'm not going to be cold today, at least hopefully, maybe in the morning, but not now. So it's kind of refreshing for it to be warm and not be absolutely miserable before we start. <laughs> I mean, as far as like podiums and stuff go, that just puts way too much stress, so I'm just here to run 75 miles hopefully, and so I feel good with that. Running as a team this year, right? That's correct. Yeah, running with Nick. Um, our goal is to get 75 miles together as a team and have a good chance to maybe podium. Never know. I've been working with my team over there two tenths down and we've been coming up with a game plan and I think I'm going to be roughly around 75 miles. That is the goal. Um, I feel like it does put pressure on me but I've done that for the 12 hour. I had my mindset on 45 and I was able to achieve it. So I'm going to try to go for that and if I feel good I'm going to do more. I always want to go for a PR so my previous best is sixth place finish and 90 miles in the individual category. As a team we've come in second and first um, but that's a little lower mileage. So I'd like to get above 90 miles. The ideal would be 100 and uh, placement is kind of secondary because I think there's a lot of good competition here. The weather looks a little bit warmer so I think it's not going to drop as many people. Um, so maybe I won't be as high as I usually am. You know, my goal is PR mileage which is hopefully 100. It is so good to see you guys. Thank you so much for the support, the love, and coming back out to the desert with us this year. We've got an incredible 24, 25 and a half, depending on what you're counting, hours in store for you over the course of the next two days. We're going to push you, we're going to challenge you, we're going to torture you a little bit. That's all what you signed up for. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. As a world toughest mutter competitor, I pledge that. As a world's toughest mutter competitor, I pledge that. I understand that world toughest mutter is a race and a challenge. I understand that world's toughest mutter is a race and a challenge. I will honor my fellow competitors with my best. I will honor my fellow competitors with my best. I will maintain the tough mutter tradition during competition. I will maintain With teamwork and camaraderie. With teamwork and camaraderie. I will not win! I will not win! Or quit! Or quit! And I will overcome all fears! And I will overcome all fears! But when was the last time you did something for the first time? If you're feeling that today, give me a hoorah! Stand. Raise your hand for me, my man, right there. Reach up. Right there. Guys, tighten it up right here, because all the staff said, you're not going to make it. I said, I did it one year. We can do this. Are you ready, buddy?
See, whatever your goal is, that is amazing. You may reach it, you may exceed it, and you may not reach it. But you know what you're guaranteed in this life? You have control of your best. You have control of your best. No one can stop you. Yeah. I've said it a million times, man. You find your best, you'll see your better. That'll make you better. You know what that does for the world? It makes us all better. You guys have proven that. You affect the world all year long. During a time where we had a test of our courage, it was you guys that I saw living like you did. You were out there still living, getting things done. And I said it before, you see the people around you? See this pit crew, the crew that's been out here getting this course together? You affected us. You inspired the hell out of us, just like you inspired the hell out of the people out there in this world that see you living like you do. And all you simply did was be in your best. That's how you affect the world. And if you can't swim, don't go in the water. What? I said, if you can't swim, don't go in the water. What? And most importantly, if you can't swim, don't go in the water. It was very, uh, well, in the beginning, you know, we were all running together, so it was hard to get out of the pack. Uh, the first mile, we were walking a lot of the uphills. Um, the first mile has a lot of hills, so we were walking a lot because there were too many competitors, and um, I think the second lap, people are already spread them out, so you see more speed through the, you know, through the laps from now on. And uh, the, the, the middle of the of the course is really, is really sandy, but it's, you know, it's runnable. You can run, you can have fun, and in the end, it's actually the best part, the last mile. There's downhill. Um, it's like hard terrain and, and not, not a lot of hills, so it's it's gonna be tough. The heat is dry, um, very dusty. So if you don't keep your map, you know, if you keep your map open, you get a lot of dust. So it's very dusty, very dry, not humid as you know the South Texas, but it's it's hot. Okay, so Evan's on his fifth lap. He's finished uh, f four laps, and he's currently uh, sitting in 13th place, which is a good position for him early in the race. He usually, uh, especially with the hot weather, he decided to start slowly, 
and just to keep a good pace. Uh, you you got to run your own pace in these races. You can't be chasing people this early. I think if you want to chase people, that comes down to maybe the last three laps, the last couple of hours. Other than that, you got to run your own race. Some people will run faster in the minute, beginning. Some will run faster at the end or in the middle. Kate's about on lap four. Uh, she's running about a 10 minute mile right now. And uh, she's, uh, she's not feeling real great though. What, explain what's going on with her. We, we think she's overheated. Uh, she's got a little bit of tingling in her hands. So we think her, you know, she's pulling blood in her core. So we think she's just a little overheated. It's hot outside. We're from Oklahoma, but it's not, it hasn't been this hot. So her heat acclimation's gone down a little bit. I think everybody's been worried about the heat. So we uh, threw some ice bags on her, got her cooled down and got her fueled up and she went back out there. Tell me where you are right now versus, say, even 20 minutes ago. Uh, a lot better than I was. I had a really bad migraine, and just stepping every single time for three laps was kind of my limit. It was just making me extremely nauseous. So I finally got my head to stop hurting enough to eat something and hopefully get back out there and feel better for once, because every lap has felt absolutely terrible so far. So. 
So Kate came in uh, after her fourth lap. Uh, she had a, just a splitting, terrible headache. Um, like every step was this excruciating pain for her. So um, we think she was extremely overheated. Um, normally heat acclimated, uh, come from Oklahoma, but not recently, it's been cooling off. Um, the heat out here today, she was just in extreme pain, couldn't take any steps. Uh, after we sat her down, we cooled her off. Cool compress, we had ice bags on her. Finally got her cooled down, got her to finally eat something. Her nausea came down. She's, she almost threw up at one point sitting in here. Um, we uh, got her to put in her shorty wetsuit, uh, keep her cool now. The temperatures dropped in the water, it's nice and cold. Uh, we finally got her back out. Uh, she spent about an hour in the pits here uh, getting nursed. 25 right now, and uh, he's out to get the you know 30 miles right now. Wet two pants. Uh, I'm gonna put my uh, my windbreaker so you know like block the wind. Uh, it's not too cold yet, um, so I'm just gonna get my uh, my windbreaker, and then if it gets cold in the next lap, I will put in my full my full wetsuit. But uh, right now it's not too cold. I think I think that will be okay. You, you just got to you know get you know calories in your body, get you know electrolytes, make sure that you drink a lot of water. Uh, it, like goose or like something something solid. No, I. I get an MRE so it's you know it's like a military MRE so it's a, it's a whole meal um, you know it's like spaghetti and chicken so it's like a full meal for me and I, yeah I, I do have some goose and you know just to keep you know keep um, a little bit for my legs um, um, what's it called um, I keep forgetting um, amino acids yeah some amino acids I try not to drink coffee um, I'm, I'm not really a fan of coffee but some people like coffee. I, I try to stay away from coffee and just playing stuff that doesn't have any caffeine, at least through the race.
usually.
since uh, um, the first lap and the second lap um, only counts as um, one per team, um, the goal right now is, is to try to get 50, 50 miles each individual. So we're gonna we're gonna take off and do the last the last two two loops, which is 10 miles together. So each of us um, will get um, 50 miles. I mean, it's not gonna count 10 miles in the team, but it will count 10 miles individual. So that's, I mean, that's the goal. You know, you know, at least we'll get you know a 50 mile uh, individual yeah. bib. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. How are you feeling? Feeling good. I'm, you know, my hamstring kind of locked in the water, but. You know, after a few miles and not eating right, it's, you know, it happens. Yeah, what do you expect, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smashed ass right here. It's one of my favorite bands. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Boone, welcome back. You done? She's calling it.